Hi, I'm Eric Pratt from US Broadcast, and today we're going to be talking about a new product from Switchblade Systems. It's called the M7, and it's this little box here behind me. Now, the M7 is the culmination of years of research on live production systems and how to uh, best meet the needs of customers when it comes to portability, power, flexibility, and affordability. So there's a couple of different things to look at here. The Switchblade Systems makes a variety of live production systems. For example, the Splice is a 4x4 four four inch system, which is very small. Uh, it's smaller than this, but this uh, has a lot more power than the Splice does. And they've also, uh, Switchblade has the Razor, which it's very small and powerful, um, but it's not very flexible in terms of the I.O. You can really only go with the four SDIs on it, whereas this has a suite of capture um, to pick from. So you can pick from HDMI, quad HDMI, uh, eight channel HDMI, um, a mixture of HDMI and SDI, which I'll get into a little bit later. And the Turbo, for example, is an extremely powerful system and it's very portable in that you can just throw it over your shoulder. Uh, it's got a built-in screen and take it on an airplane anywhere you're doing a live event. But in the past, we've had feedback that it's not financially within everybody's reach. So this product, the M7, is meant to try to accommodate everybody in terms of being a really powerful system that's very portable, very flexible, and affordable. So let's take a look at why it's each of those things. Let's talk a little bit about the flexibility of the unit. So this is the back of the M7, and you have some expected connections like gigabit ethernet, Wi-Fi, a host of uh, USB connections, and then we have the capture card. And in this unit, there's four channels of HD, HDMI, but this card can be configured to be 4K HDMI, four channels of SDI, four channels of 12G SDI, eight SDIs, eight HDMIs, um, as many uh, different kinds of combinations as we have capture cards that we can put in there. There's also a SDI option. Um, up here we can add in two different uh, full-size SDI to make this into a 4 HDMI 2 SDI or 4 SDI uh, plus 2 SDI for 6 SDI. So it's a way of bridging the gap between needing a full 8, H, uh, full 8 SDIs or letting you mix and match um, your kinds of capture cards very easily. Same thing is also true for the GPU. Um, on the GPU here, we've got the 1650 GTX, which has two HDMI outputs and a display port, but we could go all the way up to a 2080, which we could have as many as um, an HDMI and three display ports to drive multiple um, outputs, uh, multi-views, uh, UIs, or we even have a six monitor GPU, which we can use to just uh, drive a large number of different displays for signage. So there's a lot of different units um, options here in terms of flexibility to make this unit fit uh, the customer's needs the most accurately. The M7 and the entire line of Switchblade products are compatible with the Scarhoy control surfaces. Whether you're talking about switching or PTZ control or units like the Rack Fusion Live, which contain both switching and PTZ in one unit, you're able to do things like pull up your different sources in preview, push them up to program, transition between them using the cut and auto buttons, fade to black, all of the things that you would expect out of a control surface, as well as bringing up your lower thirds. But so much more, these units are fully programmable to meet every possible need uh, for controlling different kinds of equipment. A perfect example is the ability for the PTZ controller and the switcher to be in the same unit, but communicating with different pieces of equipment. So these can be sending out IP VSCA commands to a PTZ camera. You can use these to select your different inputs. You can pull up presets and then control the PTZ camera using the joystick, as well as also controlling your live production using the switcher side of things. The Scarhoy controllers really add a lot of power to the M7 lineup for a certain clientele that demand physical control surfaces as part of their workflow. 
Being just 8 inches by 6 inches by 13 inches makes it extremely portable. Being just a little bit larger than an eGPU, it can fold away into a backpack along with the optional monitor. This monitor is USB powered and it can just connect directly to the unit and fold away into the backpack as well. So now let's talk a little bit about pricing. The M7 comes in a variety of tiers representing different hardware configurations which reflect uh, different abilities and uh, the power to do more channels of uh, NDI or replay, etc. And the tier one, starting at $3,000, uh, $2,995, can do 1080p 60, four channels of HDMI or SDI, a number of different NDI inputs, and all of the things that are standard within uh, what's driving the system, which is vMix, the ability to do titles and clips and virtual sets and remote calls, uh, streaming and recording, all of that is kind of rolled into the base package. And if we take a look at some of these um, other systems that we're going to look at, we'll see that it really adds up in terms of the price performance that the system offers when you truly compare it um, against all the other equipment that you would need. But there are some other um, turnkey systems on the market that have all of these things integrated, um, albeit at different price points and slightly different configurations. Now, I'm not actually going to name names or show pictures, but we went through and um, highlighted the uh, different specifications of other systems versus their costs so that you can see in a sort of apples for apples comparison how they compare versus the different tiers of M7. But to start off with, we're gonna compare it against this sort of all-in-one turnkey system, which is very similar in terms of features, uh, in terms of the number of channels of NDI, the number of inputs, having integrated virtual sets, titles, clips, the ability to record and stream. But we can see it it's missing a few key features uh, in terms of being able to record and stream multiple channels have those remote guests. Obviously replay is not important to everybody, um, but in the tier one, uh, they're pretty even. However, the big difference here is in price where the M7 comes in $4,000, the tier one comes in $4,000 less than this system, and the tier two comes in uh, $3,000 less. This is less of a computer-based system, and there are a lot of uh, hardware-based switchers out there that fall into this category. Uh, they're very affordable, um, and in some ways they're very portable, but they're really lacking in the features department, making them not a really ideal comparison, because while they can switch between different inputs, they can't bring in IP video, they generally can't handle titles, clips, and virtual sets, they do have some limited functionality to bring in um, pictures as overlays, which is not quite the same thing as dynamic data-driven titles with animations. They require outboard recorders, separate encoders. So in order to adequately compare these kinds of hardware switchers to the M7, we have to add in all of the different components that you would need in order to um, make it an equivalent comparison. So. When we add these in, we can see that the price of the system is no longer quite so equitable. When we add in the, the price of a standalone character generator, DDRs, encoders, not everybody needs remote call-in guests, so I put zero dollars down for that. ISO recording, uh, IP-based PTZ control, a lot of these switchers or some of these switchers have serial-based PTZ control, which is sort of like comparing a horse and buggy to a, a Toyota. So I did put down um, a IP-based, uh, inexpensive IP-based PTZ controller, standalone replay, uh, etc. So you see that when you add up all these different components, you're looking at thirteen to twenty thousand dollars in order to create an equivalent system. And you, at the end of it, you have this just pile of gear, which uh, surely isn't going to make for any kind of uh, real portability. So that's how traditional switchers stack up to the M7. The engine behind the M7 and all the Switchblade products is vMix. 
a live production application capable of bringing in cameras, NDI sources, video clips, and remote web calls, and mixing them with graphics, picture-in-pictures, virtual sets, and replay. Here we have a list of all of the inputs supported in vNix, video clips, cameras in 12G SDI, 4K HDMI, and many different kinds of capture cards are supported. NDI sources from across the network, instant replay, images, PowerPoint, audio inputs, a fully functioning titling system with templates, virtual sets, web browsing, and remote video calls. The vMix UI is simple and easy to learn. We have our preview source, transitions, program source showing our overlays. Our inputs are laid out below, whether they're graphics or cameras, NDI sources, clips, etc. And then we have our audio sources off to the side that we can manage. The inputs are laid out sort of similar to a traditional switcher, except for instead of numbers, they have pictures on them and we can rearrange them depending on our needs. Within each input is a multi-view, and that is actually laid out more like a scene live production system, which others might be familiar with, allowing you to layer together each input as a scene file. So regardless of any previous experience with live production, there's a workflow that works for you with vMix. The vMix software is supported as part of your M7 purchase so that you can rest assured that the entire system will work as a seamless unit. vMix is not the only software available for the M7 and the Switchblade products. It's also available to purchase as an option Playout software, which would allow you to turn your live production system into an entire television studio, playing back video clips and adding URLs, commands, commercials, and schedules for a variety of content loaded on your system. Beyond Playout, there is also Graphics. New Blue Effects is a fully functional live production graphics system capable of bringing together all different kinds of graphics and elements, giving you a lot more power for your live production graphics. If you want to, for example, bring together different elements and control sports scores, presentation, social media, all together on one UI feeding to vMix via NDI. It allows you to assign a dedicated second seat for graphics production or take advantage of the extensive library of templates that are included with the product. For experiential events where large numbers of screens or projectors are employed, Datatons Watchout makes an ideal addition for taking NDI and other media content and displaying it up to 16K resolutions across a number of different monitors. The M7 has something for everybody, whether you're doing SDI production, HDMI, a mixture, whether you have a few cameras, a lot of cameras, whether you need something that is portable or powerful or affordable or flexible, this unit has it all. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to them at their website, which is switchbladesystems.com. You can see more information about it on our website, usbroadcast.co. And you can also talk to your local reseller about scheduling a demo. So please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Once again, I'm Eric Pratt from US Broadcast. Thanks for watching. Thank you.